This is it. This is the last shock, and by far the biggest. If you ever needed intellectual proof that Jesus Christ is real and living right now, this is it. If Jesus and the Gospels weren't true, then Luciferians wouldn't be running the world. Atheists would, or some other version of modern man. Anyone, but not Satanists, not the passionate enemies of Jesus. If Jesus wasn't real, then so-called Satanists would be scattered here and there, over the world, in little local covens, by silly teenagers rebelling against society and living in their own la-la land with their own little make-believe devils, being make-believe rebels. But no, people who believe that Lucifer is God run the world from top to bottom. They are dedicated to the core. They're highly sophisticated. They make the movies, they star in the movies, they write the songs, they sing and dance, they are worshipped as idols, they set trends, they live large, and they practice witchcraft, complete with sex magic and blood sacrifices. Why? Why do they do that? Why would they bother? Because witchcraft is real and has been since before civilization began hidden from the vile multitude who have been stupefied by propaganda to the point that they don't believe in anything anymore. And who waged a war on witchcraft on your behalf? God did, the God of the Bible. If Jesus wasn't real, the Luciferians wouldn't be building their paradise on earth. Atheists would. If Jesus wasn't real, Luciferians wouldn't be passionately hating him to the point of keeping their existence hidden under penalties of torture and death. Lo and behold, in the 21st century, yes, if Jesus was a myth, Luciferians wouldn't be working overtime to inadvertently fulfill every prophecy that Jesus gave us. Can anybody read me? What part of Jesus foretold a worldwide cashless system, a worldwide government and a worldwide religion do you not get? If Jesus wasn't real, why do former Satanists freely admit that, the, that only the true Christians are immune to witchcraft? They have no power over the disciples of Jesus. How is that possible? And what about this one that's been going around? If the Gospels were written by the Catholic Church in order to control people, then why didn't they include a Pope in the Scriptures? There's no Pope here. Why did they include instructions to obey the priests? There's no priests in the New Testament, except for God himself and all his disciples. We're all priests. If the Gospels were an invention of the Catholic Church, why does Jesus say to call no man father except your Father in heaven? Yet every priest holds the title of Father. If the Gospels were an invention of the Catholic Church to control people, why were only priests allowed to own a Bible and not the common people? Why did they burn William Tyndale at the stake, a Christian scholar who translated the Bible into English? Are you with me? Please help me understand how you don't believe in Jesus when even your enemies, the high-ranking Freemasons, think that you're stupid for not believing in Satan. There was the first shock, which was the fact that an international secret society exists at all, and that all people in power, prominence, celebrities, they're members of it. That was the first shock. The second shock was the oaths they take and the rituals they perform. Decapitated heads, brains exposed to the sun, drinking wine from human beings, skulls all done by the people you respect the most. Pretty shocking if you have any brains left in your skull and heart left in your ribcage. The third shock was the reason they took the oaths and performed the rituals. And that reason is that the secret society they all belong to is in fact Satanism. The fourth shock was the details of witchcraft and the details of the new satanic age, the Saturnian kingdom, where billions are planned for death to pave the way for a spiritual and technological utopia. But do you know what the biggest shock of all is? The shock that surpasses all of them combined. It's Jesus. Jesus is the shock. He's the shock wave, the reality and truth of him because that changes everything. He, 
changes everything. The greatest news you could never think of, that God left his abode to come here, a form of hell, manifest on earth, to be ridiculed and executed to save our sorry asses by taking a bullet for us. Don't worry, his second coming won't be so sacrificial. Better start fearing like you fear a cop and like you fear a judge. Oh, I know you tremble in front of them, but you don't fear God. Oh, how we love the darkness and sin. You, possibly you, loved gossip, you loved sex and porn, you loved sodomy, you couldn't stop lying, you couldn't stop cussing, you loved your idols, singers, actors, sports people, sports teams, putting people who fart, smell and eventually die on a pedestal. You just couldn't cut yourself off from the ways of the world. Purity? Who wants to be pure? I have to be pure? I have to live holy? Stop sinning? That's so boring. What kind of God is this? To hell with that God. Well, do you like filth in your home? Do you? Do you like filth on your carpet, on your clothes, on your face? Do you invite filthy guests over and give them a share in all your belongings and all your power? Do you give them the keys to your house and car? No, you don't. But the Creator, who has the greatest house of all, he should. We can barely earn a thousand bucks a week. And we don't give that away to anyone. But now God should share his wealth with you, the unclean, the unrepentant. Is it too much to ask your filthy guests to clean up before they enter? To watch their mouths, to control their willy? Is that too much to ask? Oh, but if God was real, what about all the children that die? What about them? What are you doing about them? Are you still stuck on which phone you're going to upgrade to or what's for dinner? Why don't you leave your abode, your luxuries and your loved ones and risk it all to go save some children yourself? Oh, but what about all those who've never heard of Jesus? Let me ask you, what's your excuse? I know they have one, but what's yours? You've heard of him. Every morning you wake up and look at the calendar is a testament to his name because it's 2021 in Australia. It's 2021 in Brazil. It's 2021 in China. It's 2021 in every single every single country in the world. So let me ask you, 2021 years since what? 